resveratrol was already known as what's called a phytoalexin. It seemed to be have antioxidant properties and was even thought at the time to be responsible. I think some people still believe it's responsible for the French paradox, where uh, the French apparently can eat fatty foods and have uh, great cardiovascular health on average. So that was all there in the late 80s. Uh, I came along, uh, well, you know, mid 90s probably was the, was the real thing when 60 Minutes did a story on it. Uh, so I came along in the late 1990s, early 2000s, and we, we weren't looking at resveratrol. In fact, I'd never heard of resveratrol when we started working on it. The, the story goes like this. Uh, it's, it, it's a pretty funny story. We had purified the CERT1 enzyme from humans. And we were looking in collaboration with a company called Biomol. Um, and the lead scientist there was Conrad Howitz. He deserves a lot of credit for this. We were looking for molecules that would inhibit the enzyme. And um, it was a collaboration and we were sharing stories and results. And uh, Conrad calls me one day and he says, uh, are you sitting down? I went, uh, I am sitting down. What's up? And he goes, we've got these strange molecules that may activate the enzyme. Uh, and then I, that, that was, of course, music to my ears because we didn't know that NAD could be used at that point. We were just on the verge of discovering that. But what we did know that was that we, we wanted to activate these enzymes because they're beneficial. We knew in yeast and in, in worms that if we put, uh, and in flies, if you put extra copies of the SIR2, SIR2 and gene, they would live longer. So we wanted more, more goodness. Uh, but finding activators of enzymes is extremely rare. Uh, I think there's only a few examples in the whole history of pharmaceutical development. And when you find one, typically people call BS on you. But here was Conrad saying, maybe we've got something. Uh, so we tested it in the lab and we could repeat his results. Yes, it was an activator. Uh, but to really show that it was true, we had to put it on some yeast cells uh, and on some human cells. And we did that. And we found that it extended their lifespan uh, in the case of yeast and in the case of human cells, protected them. And you needed the CERT1 gene for that to work. So it wasn't just an antioxidant effect, it was actually through the same mechanism that we were hoping it, it, it was. But you, you asked Joe about these other molecules. Well, we tested with Conrad, uh, well, we, we screened about 18,000 of them. Wow. And we published 21 activators in that first paper in Nature Journal, 2003. Now, resveratrol was the best one we had at the time, and it got the most attention because the red wine story was pretty funny and, and interesting to the media. But there were, there were others that were very close to resveratrol in structure and in potency. You mentioned quercetin, physetin, or physetin. Mm -hmm. uh, these are plant molecules as well. They are all produced in response to stress. Uh, when the plants are stressed, dehydration or UV light, and uh, they seem to have benefits on organisms when we consume them. Um, interestingly, what has later been discovered, though rarely acknowledged, is that these same molecules work on killing senescent cells. You know, the, mm -hmm. your viewers will know of senescent cells, the zombie cells that accumulate in our body and cause havoc. Now, others have shown that quercetin, uh, Jim Kirkland and others, uh, have senolytic properties, same with physetin. Um, but what's not recognized typically or admitted is that these molecules were discovered 15 years ago to also be CERT1 activators. 